All right, welcome to SPI. Are you trying to figure out like how much fabric capacity you're gonna possibly need? Well, don't worry, I got this covered for you. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to figure this out, okay? This is uh, gonna be pretty basic. I, I can't wait to show it to you. All right, so make sure you like, subscribe, you come, you know, all that stuff, share with your friends, leave a comment, all that, you know, you know, the YouTube stuff, right? Uh, if you want early access to this stuff for as little as five dollars, become a member and you can get, you know, get access to all this good stuff. All right, so we want to figure out like how much fabric do I need? Well, don't worry, you're in luck. Uh, Microsoft offers a free trial uh, of fabrics. So you can actually go in and see how much compute you're gonna need, right? So you can actually see it, with, you know, I've got my trial set up here. Uh, you, you can go in and what you do is you install the Microsoft Fabric Cap Capacity Metrics app, okay? So that that's uh, uh, an easy install from the app store. You can go ahead and you can install it. Now, once you have that installed, oh, now it's, of course you're gonna be bugging me. Uh, you're going to have to go in and you're going to need to find that trial capacity metrics app or whatever uh, capacity you're going to like run this on. What you're going to do is you're going to deploy your workloads out onto the fabric capacity or at least workloads that are similar to what you think you're going to be using. You, there's no shortcut around this. This is going to take a little bit of work. You can't just do math and say, I've got eight loads or whatever. You've got to actually run these things and have these processing. The good news is the trial capacity is an F64. So you're going to be starting off with a good amount of compute so that you can run and do these loads, okay? So maybe do a representative sample, but do something that's of significant weight so you can actually go run this and take a look at what your performance is for a load. Now, I just did this with a client. We set up and we have a load running for a day. We saw, okay, hey, here is the day that the activity occurred and we select it. I'm not gonna do that here uh, because I, I need all of the data for it to kind of like make sense. Uh, do not do this. I mean, you could do this and then like establish an average. Maybe you want to do that, but, um, in fact, yeah, just do that here. You've got 30 days here. You've got, uh, what's here is your total amount of CUs, right? So that's one of the big things that you have in here is this is the total amount of CUs that you've run inside your fabric capacity right now. Whoops. That's right down there at the bottom. Okay. So this a 462 or 423,642 CUs is what I use in a month's period of time. Okay. Hey, great. Now, how the heck do I translate, you know, uh, CUs or compute units per second into appropriate fabric capacity? Well, let's go over to Excel and let's make this super easy. Okay. So we're going to zoom right into this. Okay. Oh, there we go. Maybe even a little bigger, huh? No, that's pretty good. You can see it pretty good. All right. There are 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes uh, in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, total of 86,400 seconds. You take this number times the whatever F skew you have. So 2, 4, uh, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, uh, 1024, 2048. This gives you the number of CUs that you have available in any day. Okay. So in this case, oh gosh, I should really zoom in. Oh, I should have zoomed in in Excel. There we go. In this case, I had 400, 423,000 basically, uh, CPUs in a month, right? So I could say, okay, Hey, uh, this equals this divided by 30. I've got uh, 14,100. And so that means an F2 is going to be more than sufficient for my average workload. Now, the advantages of running over a month is you can look for your maximum spikes, right? So you can look for, and let's say uh, uh, this is a maximum spike. So let's say every Monday, uh, is a heavy workload for you. So I'll, I'll call this one out and I'll say Mondays are, and I'll look at what that load is 
for that given spike day. And in fact, here, I'll even take that Saturday here. It's going to refresh. It's going to show me how much compute I use on that in that spike. Come on now. Go a little faster. Zoom in so you can see it. Oh, wait, it won't refresh. It'll take a second to get there. Okay, so here is my Monday or my Saturday run here, which is my big spike day. And oh, look at that. My CUs for the day is 1,000 or uh, 121,426. I go back to my handy dandy little cheat sheet, 146,146. So my maximum compute on a day fits within an F2. So I'm okay with that F2. At a client ran, we were using an, uh, uh, we were actually using just oh, under 28,000 basically CUs. So an F32 in theory would be sufficient for them, but they're using the reporting capabilities for distribution. So we, you know, we saw that wasn't that big of a of an uptick, uh, and it made sense for growth to be able to go, sp scope with an uh, F64. Now. One thing I would recommend for, for people is know that your compute is going to go up by 25 to 50% at a minimum in a year basis. Uh, so you want to make sure that you've got sufficient compute in place so that you're going to be able to provide for whatever you've got going on. Uh, but once you kind of do that, here you go. This is, this is your compute, uh, you know, add for growth, add for additional development, you know, but, uh, really, it's pretty easy to scale this up without any issues. So, like, start here and then get going. Oh, uh, a note. You probably want to scope for 60%. So, while I had that 142 uh, was my spike day, which was more than sufficient for this, uh, an F2. If I was at a, at a company, I would be mindful that that is above that 60% threshold. And then I should really be looking at that potentially that F4. So take that for what it is. This is how I scope and estimate things. How do you scope it? Let me know what I do wrong. This is the best way uh, to figure out how much CUs you need. There's all sorts of estimators out there. I mean, Microsoft's publishing one and you know, it's all right. Uh, it said I need like an F248, so that $80,000 SKU uh, when I did it. But um, I think this works much better uh, because it's running off of real data and you could actually track that and ma manage that. And I mean, honestly, it also helps you really understand how much compute do your processes run and use. and because, uh, I mean, we are going into the cloud. Every little sip you you know, take in the cloud costs you money. Um, not when you're buying chunks of compute, but it's still potentially costing you money. So it's a good, it's a real good habit to understand what are all of your processes, what's the, what's the cost associated with them, so you can get the right SKU. If you have comments, leave them down below. Share this with other people. Would love to hear from you. Uh, like, what your thoughts are? What size? Skew, do you need following this methodology? All right, <laughs> pretty straightforward. You had the best day ever. Peace. Oh, come on. Hey, I get it. Sometimes you need someone to come in and like do more than just like what I just did with a, a simple Excel spreadsheet. Head over to bakertilly.com slash digital, click on get some help. Uh, myself or one of my compadres will reach out and we'll give you a helping hand. All right. But if you think you can do it and I got faith in you, I totally have faith in you. Check out these videos right here. They'll help you out. 